Hey YouTube, long time no see. I am back to do a video for you. I have 15 boxes stacked on 15 boxes, three books, one planner, all to have my iPhone propped up. So don't worry, I'm still not tech savvy. I still don't have all the cool equipment that the kids have. <laughs> um, the lighting is always gonna be questionable, but I do have a ring light up because it looks like it's gonna storm. So I wanted to get on here and do just an old fashioned, old school YouTube, do my makeup with me. And that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, I am really active on Instagram. I do pictures, of course, like outfit inspiration, um, beauty products, all that kind of stuff. But I do a lot of stories on Instagram and I love doing stories and it's easy and it's convenient and it's really what I do most when it comes to social media. I share things I'm buying, things I've received in the mail, things I'm loving, lip combinations, all that. And it's easy to do that because it's convenient. Sitting down to actually film a YouTube video, like I said, I'm in the old, old couch. Some things never change. I did take the picture down so there wasn't any type of like glare. Um, but it's just super easy. And so doing this, like setting up the boxes and all of that kind of stuff, it does take some extra time. If I could just sit down and talk to you guys, I would do it all the time, but it takes like, I wish I could show you the setup right now. And this is not even like any special setup that has like amazing lighting and crystal clear picture. I'm still on my iPhone, like I said, but um, the biggest part of it is like just getting the setup to do the YouTube video. So, and that's always been my problem, but I do get a lot of DMs way more than I would ever think I would get of people asking me to just do YouTube videos again. And I can't believe it. There are still that demographic of people who truly love YouTube videos. And this morning I got a little inspired because I watched this. I think it was like uncut or unedited. It was a uh, special on Candy Johnson and I loved her so much. And it just reminded me of like, I don't know, YouTube a long time ago. So I was inspired to just sit down and do my face with you on here. I've thought of doing the Instagram vertical video for Instagram TV, and I would do those more, which I could do them, but they have a 15 minute time limit. And you you know I start to ramble like I'm doing now and things get kind of crazy. So yeah, I figured I'd just try it out. Why not? I'm at my parents' house, I have my setup going on, and we're gonna do makeup. So. Just to jump right in, all I have on my face right now is some sunscreen and a little bit of a CC cream just for, where did it go? For the errands I was running earlier. Um, the sunscreen I really love, I'm almost out of it, is Suntegrity. It's more of like a natural clean brand um, and it is a five in one. It's a moisturizer, it's an SPF, it's a primer. It's just a, a little bit of coverage, not a whole lot. You can still see I have like some acne scars and I have Definitely stuff that I want covered up, um, but just for this morning, like waking up, throwing something on that's gonna protect my face SPF wise and having a tiny bit of coverage, this does the trick. Just to bronze up my face, cause it is summer. I do have some of it, somewhat of a tan, a little bit of a self tan on. It's mostly kind of all off right now. Um, I did the It Cosmetics, the Your Skin But Better CC Bronzer. I've never seen this anywhere but QVC. And I ordered it because I saw it on someone on Instagram's page, um, but it's really it's really good actually for just adding a little bit of that warm bronze into whatever you're um, you're using. So to make my face ooh, just a little bit more in tune with kind of my body, I just added a little bit of this into the sunscreen. And this has SPF in it too, so it's it's kind of nice. A lot of SPF is going on on here, um, but it does bronze up whatever you add it to. I wanna show you the color because it gets a little bit, it, can you see it gets a little dark? It's definitely warm, not a cool undertone, but it is a nice bronze sheen. And I feel like there is a sheen to it. So if you don't like any type of illumination, I do feel like this has some illumination to it. So beware, but I really love this. And I think it's definitely beneficial, especially if you do like one CC cream, like one in cosmetics, like if you have light or you have fair and you want something to be able to kind of mix and match and customize the color to whatever color you are, this is an awesome product. So I did buy it, like I said, on QVC. It was a back, it was on back order for a while and it finally just shipped a couple days ago. So it's been good, I like it. So I need, I want full coverage. I want a full face, you know me, I like, I like a full face of makeup. 
So that's what I'm gonna do right now for the rest of the day into the night. Um, if I do anything tonight, you know, I'll have my makeup done. I really am like someone who likes to just do my makeup in the morning if I know I'm gonna do something in the evening and have it last. I do not like to do a midday wash and a redo of my whole face. So when I want that to happen, when I want my makeup to go from morning to night, I do use the Estee Lauder Double Wear. And just incorporate it in with whatever I'm already using. So the color that I have in this, which is a little light for me right now, is Too Warm to in Rattan. But I love this. It's amazing coverage. You guys know it's like a tried and true old school beauty product that has stood the test of time, really. So I do a little bit of that. Like in the winter, so every once in a while, once in a while, I'll do a full face of Essay Letter Double Wear, but not often. I usually am kind of mixing it in with a little bit more glowy of a product, which usually ends up being, go figure, my favorite product, It Cosmetic CC Cream. So I have the color tan right now. I have this in Rattan. I'll list everything that I can in the down bar uh, below the video. But what I do is just mix them. And Estee Lauder Double Wear on me, it's not totally matte, but it's not really all that moisturizing and glowy. I like it later in the day after it kind of sets and you know I'm out and about and I have heat on my face or my body temperature warms it up. I like it better then than I do right when I put it on. But I do like to add a little bit of like a glow factor to it, which is why I do some CC cream. And I mix this with everything. I mix my It Cosmetic CC cream with everything on earth. Every type of foundation, I'll put a little bit of this in with it. Not only for the SPF, but just for the glow factor. And that's the original CC cream. So I should have like put a headband on to have my hair. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit of this in. This is L'Oreal Pro Glow. My thing is I mix and match and I'm like a mixologist with my foundations. And that's what I always do. I'm gonna do this just for the tone. This uh, Pro Glow is lovely, but the tone of this is the best tan tone it is caramel beige it's too dark for me just on its own but mixed in just a like tiny tiny drop into whatever foundation you're doing gives the most beautiful warm tone to your skin so i'm just gonna kind of dot this all over my face it's really really hot here today we actually had like a heat they've been talking about how hot it's gonna be here today all week and I'm taking this dense bronzer brush from Sephora. It's older, I'm sure they have something similar now. And just kind of dabbing it in. I love to use a really dense, um, dense brush to buff my foundation in. And because my neck is light. My chest actually is a little light too. I haven't been in the sun for, it's been raining so much here. I haven't been in the sun a ton, but I am due to do my self tanner. The tanner that I had on most recently was what was it? Isle of Paradise in the dark color and I really liked it. Now, if you're doing your makeup and you're kind of bronzing up your face to match your body, don't forget to get your ear because my ears are so pale because I mostly have my hair down and you'll see like, you'll totally see the difference. So, especially if you're gonna put your hair up, I need just a little bit more foundation, but um, should be good. I just need a tiny bit more. But yeah, don't forget to get your ear, especially if you're self-tanning. I don't remember to put the self-tanner on my ear. So sometimes it's a totally different color than my face. You guys like, or you guys know, so you guys know I like a little more full coverage but feel free, obviously feel free, always, to just do as much coverage as you like if you're kind of following along. 
I like two coats of whatever base. And honestly, like the SPF and the CC cream was put on early today and it's pretty much worn off by now. To be careful with my eyebrows and <laughs> so I don't wipe them off with this brush. I find I love a dense brush like this and to go kind of push it in and then buff it in. I definitely like it more than a beauty blender. Of, I like a beauty blender, but this is, every time I go, go back to using, I like a beauty blender, but every time I go back to using a brush like this, I'm reminded how much more I like it. Okay, so there's the base. Now, I'm gonna go into my eye makeup. I've been keeping it really simple for summer. Honestly, I'm lazy about my eyes. I like to just use bronzer or powder or whatever I'm using um, for my face, even like a little bit of blush. So what I'm gonna do to keep things really simple is just use what I use to do my contouring, which is the Tried and True Anastasia Contour Kit. I love it. I purchased a new one recently in the Sephora VIB sale. I've been through two of these and I just, I love this product. I always go back to it and that's what I'm using. So I'm just gonna use it for my eyes too, to keep things simple, to keep things more inexpensive, use your products in, and I always say this, and honestly, like one of my faces of the day, who knows, years ago, probably has the same exact thing I'm doing right now with this. Um, but I like to just keep it really, really simple and I don't know, have everything kind of blend together and keep it bronzy. What I'm gonna do is just do a little bit of a base on my eyelid with this shape tape. I'm almost out of this color. It's fair neutral in tart shape tape. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit and it will just create like kind of a nice base that will keep my eyeshadow on a little bit longer if I don't redo my makeup and I end up doing something tonight. And then what I like to do is just after I Put this on, then I set it with this color. I'll even mix a little bit of that one and the, um, the yellow. So I'll mix sort of this color and this one together. And then I'll just set my, um, set my eyes, just from the whole lid up till under the brow. And you can see it doesn't do a whole lot. It's really not. It's not very stark, it's not, it's pretty sheer, but it just kind of sets that concealer and creates more of a powder base for me to put a little bit of a uh, crease color in. Okay, so got the base down. Now I'm gonna take, this is a little cooler, this is the warmest, and this is right in between. So what I like on my eyes is warm. I like warm colors. So I'm going to get this, what is this? I think it's a Laura Mercier. Yes, it is. Laura Mercier brush. I love it for a crease. And I'm gonna do just the warmest color. I'm gonna tap it off and I'm just gonna do a little bit of my crease. Cause I really just want my crease to be slightly defined. I really don't want like a full out eyeshadow look. See, I just want it to be like, just a little bit defined, a little bit warmer. And I like for it to just flow up into my brow bone. So I do like to take this up a little higher and I like for it to go just the whole way across my eye. I don't like a crease look that's just out in the outer corner, not my jam. Like that, that's what I'm into. It's a little, maybe it's a little sloppier. You guys know this about me. I'm not a stickler for um, rules, like makeup rules. I like a little lived in, more sloppy look. That's just my style. Uh, but you just take it across like a windshield wiper and you add tiny, tiny, tiny bits at a time and you build it up like that. You don't put like a, go in hard in the eyeshadow and then put a glob on. Just tap a little, blow it off and build it up. 
and then keep doing that until it's what you want it to be. And I promise you, if you do it that way, it'll blend so much better. It'll look so much more seamless than trying to put like a heavy a glob of eyeshadow powder on your eye and then blend it. It's not gonna look as good. And then when you think that you're done blending, I know this is like a joke in the makeup industry, like when you think you're done blending, you're not, keep on blending. Cause you want it to be really seamless and just all kind of blend together. So you might be able to see right now, but I like to leave sort of this part of my eye lighter. So I like it to be lighter. And then what I do, just brush that off. I go back with the, um, the brush that I use for the lighter colors and I go into the lighter color again. So I'll go into this one and then I'll go into the one that has a little bit of shimmer. And I'll dab it right in the middle there and kind of run it like this. You see how that looks? So I'll do it on this side. And if you need to go up a little bit more to kind of blend it with where the bottom of that crease color ends, do that, but just make sure you have a nice seamless blending. And then I'll take just the one without the shimmer and I go just at the top. And I'll go under my eyebrow again and just make sure that that is really seamless too. See how it all just kind of blends? So it goes from like light to a little bit darker to light again. And that's sort of my style of a quick eyeshadow using all one palette that you're using for your cheeks too. And then if you really want, and you're someone who likes a brow bone, Sorry, I have to fix this brow. If you're someone who likes a brow bone highlight, take your brush or even your finger, I'll use my finger, and go into the one with shimmer and then dab it right under your brow bone. See? Can you catch the, can you see it catching the light? This just makes me realize how much I need Botox and I'm scared of Botox. I always say that. I'm terrified of it, but look how much better. Ugh. Okay. Don't feel pressure to get Botox. I'm terrified of it. You guys know I'm not terrified to get my lips filled, but I'm terrified of the toxin, which probably doesn't make any sense, but it's just the way it is. I do like to take the brush. One thing to remember is take the brush and make sure you're just going and getting right here. And then you can even put a little bit of lighter in there, but I usually do that after concealer. So there we go. So that is the simple eyeshadow look with the contour kit. Now I'm gonna go in, I still do my wing liner. It's, nothing's changed with that. I'm gonna go in with my liner, which I can't find. Where are you? Where are you? Here we go. Okay, still using the Maybelline Ultra Liner. Love it, nothing's changed with that. And I still love Maybelline Lash Sensational. So if this is not a testament, so the last time I probably did a YouTube video. I don't know what it is. So I'm gonna do my liner, which you guys know, I'm like a total liquid liner wing fan. I don't think that's gonna change. Honestly, I don't. I might cut this part out so you're not painfully watching me do my liquid liner. One tip I have with liner is when you're doing your liquid liner and you're doing a cat eye or a flick at the ends and you have eyes like me that kind of turn down, don't wait until the very outside corner of your eyelid to flick the liner up. I do it just a little bit before, um, before where my eye ends or my um, lid ends because I don't want that downturned look and I want, I want the liquid liner to lift my eye up. Do you see what I mean? Like I don't take it the whole way down here and then do a liquid liner line. <laughs> I do it before the edge of my eyelid, if that makes sense. It's a huge tip I have for people when you're doing liquid liner. 
a lot of people will go down to the edge of their eyelid and then flick it up and that's fine but if you don't if your eyes are down turned a little bit or like me you don't you want to lift what looks like it's drooping then you don't want to go the whole way down and then up you want to kind of go in a little bit and then pull the wing out and up because it'll lift your eye and then this mascara is kind of drying out i'm ready for a new one it doesn't last extremely long it can get a little clumpy my warning for you but it's just so good i find it's like good to be it's not waterproof but it doesn't run on me like a lot of other mascaras run it just really makes my lashes curl up longer and thicker so that's the eye look so i'm gonna do the other side okay do you see how i do my wing it's again it's not for everyone it's like my own personal preference as far as wing liner goes but whatever everyone likes their own thing Do you guys watch HRH Collection? She's my favorite. And she's so extra and spastic in her videos. And it's just, I don't, I love it so much. And she was talking, she went on like a rant about liquid liner. About like, you have to go straight out with it. <laughs> and like, don't talk to her if you, if you go, if you curl it up. And so I posted it. I think I posted a boomerang on Instagram and I was like, is this okay, HRH? Like, I was laughing because I, I was pretty sure I'd do my liner in a way that she hates, but she DM'd me and told me it's approved. It's approved liner. But she makes me laugh. You have to watch her and you have to watch her with like a, um, you have to just have a sense of humor when you watch her. You can't be so offended by everything she says. Cause she's really funny. She's entertaining. My mom laughs at her. When I put her on TV, her, I'll put her videos on the television on YouTube. And you guys know I take care, help take care of my mom. And my mom really is at the point where she's nonverbal. Um, but when I put Alex on, there will be a time in the video that my mom will just start laughing. And it's something, it's usually when Alex is like doing some type of like really extra rant or whatever, but there's something about her that my mom laughs at and likes. Her and Lisa Lisa D are my mom's favorites if I put them on. So there is the eye situation. So there we go. Nothing different, same old same. Um, but now I'm gonna do my, another thing that's a little, I don't wanna say controversial, but it's like personal preference is my concealer and I like it to be super dramatic super bright super white like bam and not a lot of people like that anymore it's passe it's out of style it's not flattering whatever listen do what you want do exactly what you want with your face and your makeup and do not worry about what one freaking person says because <laughs> if you like it that is all that matters I've been defending makeup looks that I've done since high school literally since high school and do you think any anyone's words or opinions stop me from doing a wing liner since college or wearing like concealer nude lipstick in high school no no one's ever been able to tell me otherwise like if i like something i do it i might look back on stuff and be like what the hell were you thinking but no one's been able to change my opinion in the moment so and trust me i'm sure if you look back at old videos there are plenty of things that i did that weren't um, that I'd look back at now and be like horrified by but yeah I like a light under eye and so what I do especially when you're a little older like me and a little drier and a little more fine liney you need um, a concealer that has a little bit of moisture in it and I do love shape tape but I like to put this down sometimes as a little bit of a base before shape tape I either like to use, which I don't have with me now, Becca Under Eye Brightener, or I like to use Tarte Creaseless Concealer. This is dewy, so a lot of people don't love this heavily under their eyes, but if you do just a little swipe of this, it'll moisturize the under eye. And if you wanna go in with a more dramatic shape tape look, 
then it'll kind of prep your under eye with a little bit of dewiness to have that shape tape sit a little bit better on it. So I'm gonna go in now with shape tape. I'm gonna just keep on trying to use up. This is basically all, I know this is probably making my under eyes even more unflattering because it's almost out. Can you believe I've made it through a shape tape? But I am trying to scrape every last bit of it. So this is kind of how I'm doing my under eye. Lately, it's a little more forgiving even in the summer, but I don't know. I, I'm probably a little too old to do this. But I like the look, so I still, I still do it. And you know, that's, like I said, that's all that matters. If you like it, even if it's not the most, like who cares if it's not the most flattering thing? I, I actually don't think I do care. Like I know that less is more as you get older. And I'd probably, if I was doing someone's makeup, I probably wouldn't do all of this. I just, I like drama on my own face and So this is what I do. And I like to highlight these areas of my face like that and a little bit like that. So that's what I do. And I think you've probably seen it before, but I'm still doing that. And then I let it sit for a little bit. I just let it kind of set into my skin for a minute. And this is how I'm gonna blend it in. You can do a wet beauty or a damp beauty blender, not a wet one, or you can use some type of brush. And I like to use this Heavenly Lux brush. And so I start down here because I let the under eyes sit a little longer. And I make sure the Heavenly Lux brush by It Cosmetics, I forgot to say that. See how I buffed it in? So it's not super stark. It just brings a little light to these areas. And I work my way into all the areas that aren't my under eyes because I let those sit a little longer. Do you see the light that it's bringing to my face there? And I don't want to wipe it all away. I kind of want to press it in and buff it. So when I do the under eyes, I start with what's, you know, I start with the edges first and I blend those. I blend the edges against my nose. And then I go straight out. And then I make sure with this side to get the corner of my eye and lift up. And that will lift, can you see? That really lifts the eye. And then I'll go in. Make sure you get there. So that's it. Can you see it just, it creates sort of like a natural lift. Um, now it might be a little much, you, you might not need as much or want as much as I'm doing, but you can see why I'm doing it. Cause I like that, I like the look of the lift where we're adding lightness. Again, I take this side of the brush and I pull up with the concealer. So that's the look. And then sometimes what I do is I'll take a little more and where I have sort of these lines, which I'm dabbling with wanting, dabbling with the idea of wanting Voluma to kind of lift. So I might be doing that eventually. Um, but you can do a little, just a little bit here in those areas to like brighten it up. And I promise you, if you blend really well and your face is prepped with moisturizer, this will not be super caked on and it, it really won't. And then you set with a setting spray, it won't look cakey. So that's what we're working with. And now we'll go in with, um, I'm gonna set my under eyes. So you you don't always have to set them. I think with shape tape that you don't have to set it always depending on your skin type. I think that shape tape holds its own without setting it at times. I like to set it for that extra brightness 
what I do is I combine these two. I combine Ben Nye Pretty in Pink and I combine the Super White in the lid. So I do a little of each in the lid. Um, and I put it on just because I'm lazy. I put it on with a dry beauty blender. But you don't have to do that because I do find that Shape Tape holds its own um, without necessarily setting it if you are a little more mature with your skin. But I just like that extra brightness and setting. So I do set it. And like I said, I do it with a dry beauty blender. It should be damp, but it's fine. And I do the, the end that has the point. And I add a little extra of the white in the corners. I saw that on a video before. And I think I even did a video at one point on this technique. but that's how I set. Then I'll do a little in the other areas with what's remaining on here. And now I will go in and do my, um, my contour. And I use the Anastasia Contour Kit, again, that I use for my eyes. And the brushes I'm using right now, It Cosmetics for Ulta, just this brush. I really like it. It's, it's pretty flimsy, but it's dense enough to do a really nice contour. And I go in with this and this. So these two are the ones I use. The darkest one I don't. But mainly I use this. I'll just go back and forth, really. And I still like a really strong contour. Again, nothing's changed with that. There are days where I want to be more natural and glowy and, and um, you know, that barely there type of makeup. And then there's days where I like to be really made up. And... Like I said, that's all personal preference and it's all just what your personal style is. If you wanna take time and do that every day, then by all means, do it. It's what makes you feel best about yourself and that no one else's opinion should matter when it comes to that. If something makes you feel confident, we have all seen those women where they might be wearing something or maybe they do their makeup a certain way that's really dramatic or off the wall and, and maybe you've seen them and thought like, what is making her do like that? whatever eyeliner like that or that blue eyeshadow but the woman is so like confident you can tell it's just i love that that's there is no right or wrong way to do your makeup even these videos like what's out and what's in and how to look how to not look like this and how to look better and how to look younger and yeah like all of that matters and there's tricks and tips that you can can do to make yourself look slimmer or more defined cheekbones or younger or older and, and there's makeup mistakes and it but like at the end of the day all of that aside like you have to do what makes you feel comfortable and confident and just good in your skin and if it's not what is mainstream or by the books or by the makeup rules then so be it like who who really cares that's that's probably my the main takeaway from this video you do what makes you feel good and I don't know. That's all I think that matters. As I get older, I learn that and more and more. You just do what makes you feel good and you don't judge anybody else for doing what makes them feel good about themselves. That's major. If they're doing something that you don't agree with or that they shouldn't be doing or wearing their hair a certain way that you don't like, guess what? It's not your hair. Not your body, not your hair. Don't worry about it. Mind your business. So what I'll do after I do my contour is I'll take these two and I'll just clean up underneath. So I'll clean up. Again, I think it's all about like cleaning up the edges of where things end and where new product begins just always make sure you're blending and cleaning up the edges and then i might go back in with the bronzer brush and where did i put it i don't even know where i put it here we go 
and I might do a little more or like light light handedly kind of blend a little more and I'll take whatever is left on here and I will do my nose. This is how I do it. I go down. I don't do it precisely with like an eyeshadow brush. <clears throat> I just go down the sides with what is left on my brush. And then I go to the tip of my nose and do that. I kind of like a darker like sun kissed look to the nose. And then I'll blend it out with a little bit of highlight. But even, there we go. Even that helps, just kind of darkening it up just on the edges to slim it a little bit. Okay, next, I just want a little bit of blush. I'm not into a ton of blush lately. I have Buxom, um, what is this? Wonderlust, wait, no, it's not called Wonderlust. Sichies, Sichies, I don't know how to say this word. Um, but it's the Buxom Blush. And I just like to do my blush. Like right here. At the top back part of where my contour is. And I'll use what's on the brush. And I really don't even dip it in again. So I like to concentrate most of my blush. Sort of like this. And then I'll do like a quick on the nose because <laughs> I always would see my mom do that when she did her makeup. So I do that, obviously. And it's time for highlighter, my favorite part. And my favorite highlighter is still tried and true Lara Geller. Don't you worry, I have a backup in my drawer ready to go. This is the best highlighter. Hi this is the best highlighter on earth and it is French Vanilla and Portofino. It's a dual split. And my lips are so dry right now. I really just swirl these babies together. And I get it on my brush and I put my highlight here. But I'm telling you that even if you have skin that is more mature or a little older, this highlighter will not make you look, it'll just make you look shiny. Do you see this? It'll make you look shiny and glowy and dewy and it will not be unflattering. It will not make you look creepy. It will not make you look like you're filled with fine lines all around your eye area. It just, blends everything together perfectly i'll take it up like this and then i'll even i'll blend kind of where my contour ends right here because sometimes i'm going fast it can get a little messy i'll use this and i will blend it even a little like that because maybe it'll pick up a little bit of my pore texture there like ever so slightly but not enough that I care and I feel like it just makes it more of a seamless transition. And I'll kind of do the same like right here. It is, look at this. Oh yeah, boom, 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 look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Gloss up on your chin. You guys, look at that. It's like a glow up on your chin. It's the best, it's the best freaking highlighter. And then I do this, and then I do down the nose. I'm really liberal with this. And then I'll do on the tip of the nose. Even though I shouldn't, because I have a bulbous nose, but I don't even care. And then I'll do where my 11s are, and up here, and just blend it all. And, and then I'll go like this, and I'll do a dot in each corner of my eye. Bam, this is the best. I hope they never stop making it. It's literally the best highlighter to ever exist. So that's it, guys, that's it. That is what I'm wearing most of the time on my face. When you ask me what I'm wearing, on my Instagram DMs, this is it. Lipstick, I know everyone loves lips. I will do what I was wearing last night, which I've been getting a lot of DMs about. Lancome Ideal. 
again, nothing's changed. I feel like I'm doing a tutorial I did three years ago. But Lancome Ideal, and it's not a tutorial, it's just like I do my, this is definitely not a tutorial. But Lancome Ideal, So I just got my lips done last week and I love how he did them. I do one syringe of Juvederm Ultra and I love it. Again, it's not for everyone, but it's for me. So I do the Lancome Ideal. And then what I did last night, which I love, is this, my friend Sandra, TT Sandra. She's like the queen. She's my... I freaking love her. She's just the best. Um, you guys all, I think you all know her, but she does the best beauty and makeup and fashion videos ever. But she told me about this, and this is Berry Glam by Clarins, and this was holiday specific, but I think they have the berry shade all the time, just not the berry glam. So I just do this over top of the lip liner, and it's a lip oil. And so it's really hydrating. It actually like sinks into your lips as to stain them. Like it doesn't, it's not a stain, but for some reason it just, where did I put that lip liner? It's not a stain, but for some reason it stains my lips. Maybe it doesn't, <laughs> but it makes me feel like it gives like color to my lips mixed with a lip liner that lasts for a while. And it's the most, Sandra told me to do this combination and it's the best combination ever. Isn't that pretty? All right, here we go. This is it. <laughs> this is my face that you typically see on Instagram. And it's really just my quick makeup routine. and. I don't think there's a ton of products, probably more than the average person, but using the same contour kit for your contour, bronzer, if you wanna use a bronzer, highlight, cleanup, and eyeshadow is key. It's so worth the $40 or whatever that contour kit is priced at. Um, but I hope you liked it. It was so fun to do this. I hope to do more soon, even if I just talk and catch up and do some like things I'm buying lately and that sort of thing, but I'm really into it and I'm really excited. And one thing that I bought yesterday that I'm obsessed with, just to show you, is this Yeti. Non-makeup related. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my makeup routine or my current look right now. If you made it through this whole entire video, you're a saint, so thank you. Um, leave me some comments below. Let me know what you're up to. Check in, favorite products, anything you wanna say. Holler at me. I'm really excited to be back on YouTube. I hope that all goes well when this video actually uploads. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. Catch me on Instagram and send me some DMs and I will talk to you there. Mwah.